Hi, everyone. Welcome. Uh, my name is Eric Howard. I'm with the uh, customer success team at Aptis. And uh, we're anxious to uh, introduce these speakers to you and, and get started. And uh, this, this session is uh, why integration to ERP matters for industrial manufacturers. Um, let me go ahead and introduce the panel. Click the next uh, slide, please. Thank you. This is Don Cochran. Don's the Vice President of Sales and Alliances at Eastline. We have Elliot Yama, uh, Area Vice President of Marketing here at Aptis. And lastly, Chris Stewart, who's the Area Vice President of Sales Engineering here at Aptis as well. So without further ado, I'll let these guys get started. Thank you. Oh, I've got... Well, good morning. The uh, topic today is the integration to ERP, which is a, what I've found in my many, many years in CPQ is um, a very, very important uh, topic. Uh, you know, realtors say location, location, location. Well, the CPQ and ERP should be integration, integration, integration. And some of the key things, as you'll see on the slides, on the, at least on the ERP side, is to be able to take the customer information, product information, your costing, planning, and be able to <clears throat> release these to production. And CPQ to really connect, to pull much information out of CPQ so that you can, again, get the customer, the product, the pricing logic is critical, and be able to get the quote back to the ERP solution so it works, because if you've got a, an ERP system that has an existing CP, well, I won't call them product configurator, really what they are, and they don't go outside the ERP system, you've got to have the right characteristics or um, it, uh, features or whatever the case for that to work. Because if you send it back and it won't work, ERP is going to hiccup, and guess what? You're going to have to do it manually. So the key thing there is to be able to make sure that that integration is there. <clears throat> and some of the uh, essential things that we're working on today is to be able to take this product configuration rules and be able to translate that information, put it into Aptis, and you'll see a demonstration of this later today. We've had um, a few of the analysts are, um, I guess at best, they first accepted, okay, you can do it, and they come back and says, no, that's not possible. And so we've showed them that it is possible, and we'll show you again today that it's pos not only possible, it's very feasible, it can be done on a daily basis, it can be done on call. So some of those critical things w would be to be able to take it from the opportunity into CRM to be able to punch out and pull up your appropriate product, and it's a replication of what's in the ERP. So that is one of our specific goals here is to be able to do that. And again, you'll see that today. So at least on a quote to cash process, we want to be able to, uh, again, convert the rules and make them essentially it's a one-to-one -one. although the intent of the product configurator in the ERP system is it's going to stay in ERP it can't go outside it's just not built to do that so this is one of the things we really want to be able to showcase show you how we've done it and <clears throat> pull the pricing because that's critical as well you're not going to have a CPQ solution quote without a price and then be able to, again, get that price or get that quote back into your ERP system in a bi-directional manner so that when you send it, you get the quote number or order number back from the ERP system. Or if a change is made on one side, the other side knows about it. So I'm not sure that we'll be able to get into all of that today, but that's essentially the goal and how we want to pursue. So if there's any questions here or afterwards, I'll be here. Don, thanks so much. Hi, I'm Elliot. Um, <coughs> if you're in a manufacturing organization and you're lacking that integration, then you know all too well some of the challenges that are associated with not having the integration, right? You 
you run the risk of quoting errors, revenue leakage. Uh, that creates rework and challenges, but more importantly, it, it can become a, a rate limiting factor on the revenue cycle. An alternative then is, let's say I want that master data, I want those manufacturing or design rules to be available in the sales configuration process, and so my choices are largely to duplicate that information. <clears throat> that creates a lot of additional work. It also creates the potential for more problems, for more, for more errors or, uh, or risk. And if I don't have that, then I have an incomplete system of record, right? I'm not returning information back to that. I still, I don't have a single source of truth. So the idea then of having that integration is, is an imperative. <clears throat> now, it's not just us saying it, right? The major analysts are recognize this as well. So folks like Forrester are talking about the importance of connecting back office and front office. Gardner talking about new and emerging capabilities, right, with deeper integration with back-end fulfillment. Right? So you've got information that begins in back-end, brought into the sales configuration experience, right, for the customer-centric organization, and then returning that information into the back-end. So it's not just you and it's not just us, but we all recognize the importance here. What we want to achieve and what we'll, we'll talk a little bit about today is some of the things that we do in the SAP environment. So if you are an organization that manufactures complex solutions, you may well likely be using SAP variant configuration. If you don't know VC, then it might be helpful to think of it as a set of rules that can handle myriad complexity. And so the key then is to utilize that product master information, the bill of materials information, and other master data in SAP, and translate that, bring that into Aptis, translate those VC rules and pricing rules, could be IPC, do that automatically so it's relatively hands-free from an administration standpoint, thereby lowering your effort but also removing the risk, removing the issues associated with duplication or replication. And that once that quote has been accepted by the customer, returning that accepted quote as an order into SAP to keep that system of record as the single source of truth. So this is the goal, and here's the plan. Here's how you reach the goal. So uh, again, I won't take you in depth through this. Uh, I'll share some of that uh, leave some of that to Chris, but just to give you some sense of how we do this, you've got Aptis on the right hand side of this screen sitting in CRM and all of the good things that are associated with your configura sales configuration experience, so product rules, options, attributes, expressions, pricing, pricing and quotes order, connected that with your accounts in CRM. And when, you, when your sales or partner representatives begin that quoting process, they're working from information that comes directly from SAP. And so you see your business partners, your master data, your configuration rules, your pricing rules, your characteristics being brought into Aptis Connector for SAP turned into XML and then automatically translated into the Aptis so that the intent of all of those rules, the intent of those designs in SAP is now manifest in the sales configuration experience. And why is this important? It may be important in your case, but maybe you look like some other folks. So here's a story about a global manufacturer. They make a series of pieces of equipment that are used in a variety of industrial applications, and they're, they're selling these around the world. And to reach those customers that operate in different geographic regions and in different verticals, industry segments, they use a large network of resellers. So these resellers need to be able to quote, and they need to produce accurate quotes, they need to price these, and so 
administering this process heretofore was massively complex and rife with errors. They were able to set up a solution where they're using Aptis CPQ, their partners log into that through a, through a community portal, and as they go through configuration, they're working within the bounds of what's been defined in SAP. So that's particularly important because they're configuring and quoting products, a range of products, for over 3,000 customers. Now, in this case, this customer has a very mature deployment of SAP, along with the PLM solutions that are governing both what they, des what they design, manufacture, and bring to market. So they were really seeking a customer-centered engagement model. Run one where they know the information about the customer, they can track opportunities with their partners, but the quoting process then is administered in a way that avoids all those risks and challenges that we discussed earlier. And importantly, leverages the investment that they've made in those legacy systems, but doesn't create administrative or uh, work burden on the IT group that administers those, those solutions. So that's the key. So at this point, I want to show you a little bit about how this particular customer managed that, and I'm going to turn it over to Chris to Thank walk you, us through that. Good. Sure enough. So this is the administration screen for the SAP connector. The administration capabilities start at the bottom where you'll set up connectivity to the systems, both uh, Aptis as well as the um, ERP systems you need to connect to. You'll set up user roles, so you can have different roles for different people in your organization so that they'll have uh, the capability to maybe pull information out of the ERP, uh, and then other people may have the permission to move it in so you can separate the process out by role. And then we have the ability to let you view all the information that's been brought over into the, the uh, connector by the data type. So all the materials, the variants, pricing, et cetera. You can go in and see what is in the, the translation tables, if you will. And then we have, of course, the ability to report on that and then the visibility into each step of the process. So you can see exactly what's happening in case something goes wrong. Now across the top, you'll see that I moved over into the model selection. So once we have connectivity, we can go in and decide which models that we want to bring over. And we can define that at a very high level. And in the background, we're able to find all the relationships between the materials uh, and the rules and pull those over um, into the same constructs in uh, Aptis. So we'll be pulling over characteristics from the ERP into attributes in Aptis and the materials will go in as products within Aptis as well. Once we've defined uh, those uh, products and pulled them over, the key thing that uh, we need to bring over is the rules that are applied as you make selections in the product. Can you explain this rule to us? <laughs> uh, I can explain the rules on the right much better than I can explain the rules on the, oh, okay. the left. <laughs> I'll leave it to Don oh, to explain okay. those. Uh, but what we're doing here is looking for a pattern. On the left, you'll see these rules have a, a specific pattern, and we recognize that pattern. And working with dozens of uh, customers and models, we've been able to um, build up a library of those rule patterns and then equate those into the construct in Aptis that matches that capability. So it's an inclusion rule, an exclusion rule, you want to hide or show something, you want to narrow down a list. All of that's happening um, uh, in the translation so that you don't have to maintain the rules in both systems. Obviously, if any of you have done that, it's difficult uh, from an administrative perspective to keep those in sync. Now you can just administer the rules in one place in SAP and automatically have those rules come over to Aptis. Once it's in the system, you can go ahead and deploy it out. This is in um, an e-commerce UI, and the uh, rules will be applied just as if um, you were configuring in the ERP system, and any um, changes to those products will be uh, brought over as well. So you can set up jobs periodically to run, pull the information that has changed, and then when you're ready to bring that change in, and the application will automatically update 
So the UI will match the characteristic groups in SAP. You'll have attribute groups uh, in the UI in Aptis. So it'll adapt to all the, the changes that you've made and um, allow you to uh, continue to utilize the uh, CPQ system without having the, the overhead of maintenance. Once the uh, product has been configured, quoted, and turned into an order, that order is again translated back into the SAP uh, format. So the order number comes back into uh, uh, CPQ, so you can see the, the relationship between the order in SAP and CPQ. And then, of course, um, the products and characteristics are brought over as uh, materials and uh, the Obviously, there's some things that may get exploded on the back end side, on the SAP side. So you'll have the commercial representation of the product in CPQ, and you'll have the uh, manufacturing representation of the product with all the details, every nut, bolt, and screw that you need. And so you don't have to have that information in CPQ, and it can be added in the, in the back end ERP. Thanks so much, Chris. You bet. Yeah, so with that end-to-end -end journey, kind of that round trip that Chris just walked us through, the benefits for the customer that we we're talking about are very real, right? Helping them achieve faster time to market, a reduction in the level of effort that they have to take around product administration, at least compared to what they were doing before, a more accurate order fulfillment, simply there's just fewer errors entering the, the, uh, the quoting process, and which means resulting in fewer returns. They're leveraging their investment not only in ERP and PLM, but also the investment that they made in their case in the Salesforce CRM. Net-net, they're running a faster quote to cash cycle. And that's very real value. If you're interested to see or understand more about what we shared here, we'll answer a few questions, but before we get there, you can also turn to the resources that are available on aptis.com. So we have information about configure price quote <clears throat> solutions, integrated CPQ and contract management, if contracting is an important part of your go-to-market, and specifically around the capability that we just described here today, which is the SAP connector, sorry, the Aptis connector for SAP variant configuration. And if you'd like to see, so we showed you some stills, if you'd like to see that running in real time or potentially understand how it might integrate with your SAP VC implementation, then the team here uh, on hand can actually work with you to ingest your information and show you how that might work. I think that's the end of our slides. Are there any questions that uh, Chris and Don and I can field for you all? in the time that we have remaining. So the question was around, uh, you showed how to kind of export it over in your slides. Can you also talk about the update cycle so that as the updates are occurring in the ERP of how the administrators deal with that, is that something they have to administrator has to recognize or is that automatically done? Thanks. Maybe just comment on some of that strategy. Thanks. So he wants to know about update cycles. Is it auto or is it run by an admin? So can you talk about the update capabilities within the UI that you should do? Yeah, so the thing there is you have to make sure that if you um, have a product structure that can be automatically updated, you can set up the jobs and have them run periodically. So for common changes, um, pricing changes, um, adding or removing values from a characteristic or an attribute, those changes can come over automatically more uh, substantial changes where you might want to um, do it manually because there needs to be some augmentation on the CPQ side uh, would probably um, be something you'd want to do manually because uh, you may want to add product data or some other um, uh, associated content before you publish out uh, a major change. So for the typical day-to-day -day small changes, those are uh, brought over automatically, and for the larger changes, you'd bring those over manually. One of the things to keep in mind is that the when you pull the knowledge base from the variant configurator, it's extracted outside of SAP, and all the translation and the XML generation and the uh, web update into 
uh, Aptus is all automated. And it, if there is a requirement for a change, and <clears throat> we've had customers where they have, do it on a daily cycle because they have a product that changes frequently. So they can push that overnight and get it into production the next day. A, uh, if you have multiple models, it's not just necessarily one by one. Uh, you can schedule it, uh, you know, once, twice a week, whatever the case. And <clears throat> at, at some point in time, we'll be able to provide for you a capability to move multiple models in sync with one another, which could be up to 10 models at a time. Well, fantastic. If there are no more questions, we'll, we've shared the information that we prepared for you. If there's something you'd like to discuss offline, then please feel free to connect with any one of us or your Aptus representative can steer you towards us. So thank you very much and thanks for coming.